But I just want to ask you all some questions. We did a survey a while ago um, through the church, and they had some questions that they want to ask as far as budgeting, uh, planning, um, how to get out of debt, and stuff like that. So I just want to tackle the first obvious question that most people had when we did our survey, and it was, what are some steps on getting out of debt? So um, let's have Sister Bridget, would you like to start? Is Mike or home, Michael? Can you hear me? Yes, turn it up. Okay, so um, the first thing that I would suggest is a budget. You cannot tackle something you can't see. So until you make a list of all the things you owe and how much income you have to um, be able to address those things, you have no base to start moving forward. So a lot of people are chasing their debt because they're, it's just a cycle. You don't really know what you have, um, how much you have, and how much you have to... Um, <clears throat> tackle it so my first um, suggestion would be to have a budget um, also you would need to pull your credit or have your credit pulled um, in order to know how many debts that you truly have and the balances that's on all those things to be able to um, tackle those mostly first I guess um, I don't know how in depth you want me to go okay so there's a ripple down effect so as you start to accomplish um, you would take the least balance that you have and then you would pay that down first and as you pay the least down you feel accomplished in one thing you take that same payment that you were paying on that least thing and you apply it to the next least thing you don't put it in your pocket you don't go buy coffee you don't go get shoes you now apply that along with what you're already paying on the next thing. And it helps you to pay that down even faster. So if you were paying something off $10 a month, and now that $10 is free, you now add it to the next thing. So instead of paying $25 on that thing you were paying, now you're paying $35 on the next thing. And then it goes on and on and on. And as you do that, your debts get paid down faster. So before you know it, you may have a car payment that was $250, and because you've paid off so many other things, you're now applying an additional uh, $50 or $75 to that $250 uh, car payment, and it's allowing you to pay that off faster. Uh, um, ultimately, you're debt free, basically. Let, let, let me first and foremost say hello to you. Good afternoon, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. Hello. To my sister in, on this panel, so glad to be with you. And then to my friend, your pastor, the angel of this house. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> No, now, 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 let me say this. I know I'm going to talk about finances, but understand that when you bless and love on your pastor, God will bless and love on you. All right, all right, all right. My friend, Brother Mario, I tried to be kind and be off to the side. I'm a guest in your house, and I'm. First lady was trying to, you can sit here. Oh, no, I better not sit over there. All right, let me get, well, I got some room. But I'm glad to be here. I really am. I, I, I'm glad to be here. I, I love your pastor. I really do. I love your pastor. And he and I go a long way back in the ministry. Keep on praising him, church. I don't care what you stand in need of. God's got it. And if you show enough need the Lord to show up in your life, uh, you're praising. Oh, I'm in the book, y'all. God inhabits the praises of his people. And when God shows up, God shows out. And none that it can't do. Praise team, bless y'all, bless y'all, 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 y'all. Look, Mario, all this, I, Doc, I almost came up and hit you, but I said, no, be kind. Be grateful, be grateful. I'm gonna tell you, you could have tried it, but Mr. Barry is right back there. He would have came up here somewhere. I'm secure uh, over here, praise the Lord. Amen, 
Keep loving on your pastor. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. And they started off singing a song. Let me just give you a real quick scripture that, 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 that just hit me on this. Uh, and y'all were singing this. Part of this. Call on him. Can I just tell you what Jeremiah 33 and 3 says? Call on me. And I'll answer. <laughs> and I'll show you great and mighty things you knew not of by simply calling. I'm glad to, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad, let me, let me, let me, let me. I'm glad. I'm glad to be here with you. I'm glad. Let me let me say let me let me just say something real quick. Let me. God's got a way. I, 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 we were all off kilter this morning too. Late. I'm running off. You think I'm late? I'm late because you can't put God in a box. Let God have His way, dog. Let Him let Him have His way. Let Him. Let me let me let me say that. Uh, in talking about finances, my question to you, do you control your finances or does your finance control you? Mm -hmm. we, we have got here to the point where we control it. You know, if you're not careful, you get married to the car. I'm married to the house. All of my time goes to my debt. Now, how do I work that out? How do I fix that? Let me, let me give the first budget item, line item of your income and your expenses. We don't have time today, but one of the things I'm going to talk about down the road, if he allows me to come back, is what is called a debt ratio. It's what you have coming in versus what you have going out. Now and then, there's a line I love to use when we do a budget. It lists every expense that you have. Now, the first expense everybody ought to have is what? Come on, talk to me. Some of y'all said it. Some of you didn't. My tithe and offerings to God. Well, I'm going to tithe when I can afford it. Baby, you can't afford not to do it. Oh, I done gone to meddling now. Okay. Uh, sound like I'm at home now in church. No, no, no. Let me help this really, really, really. If you want to get the pecking order right. See, too many times we want the blessing without following the blesser. Right? Put things in the proper order. God always first gives the command, then he gives the blessing. We've got to stop wanting to seek the hand of God and start seeking the face of God. The hand of God are his blessing. The face is his righteousness. Oh, talk to me in here now. Come on. So, 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 so the first is tithe and offering. It, it's a matter of people, as people say to me sometimes, well, do I tithe on my gross or do I tithe on my net? How you want God to bless you? Bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse that there may be meat in and prove me now. Test me, God says. One of the few times God will say, test me. And prove me now, he would say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven, and I'll pour you out such a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive it. Can I tell you something? That ain't for him. That's for us. And if that ain't enough for you, go on down one more stanza. And he says, amen. Now this is why I want to shout. If you don't think it's important, look what else he says. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. But now when you give, let me tell you that, do not squeeze a dollar till it hollers. You know how we get doing offering. No, 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 no. It's cheerful giving. He who sows sparingly shall. Uh -huh. And he who sows bountifully shall. Rebountifully. 
But let every man give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly. See, y'all don't got quiet on me in here. Not grudgingly. I thought he was talking finances. I am. Not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a. We ought to come down to our throne, money. Woo! Cause, cause, cause let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me say this. Let me say. I know I don't gone over my time. Let me say this. If you got it, God gave it to you. You did nothing on your own. The Bible said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So if I got it, it belongs to Him anyway. And when I give it back to Him, He just keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again because I'm being obedient. I'm trying to hush now. I'm trying to hush. I done messed around and spilled my drink on my shirt. <laughs> but, but, but budgeting, 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 really, you have to know what you have coming in versus what you have going out, or you'll be going from paycheck to paycheck and not know where it is going. Now, a part of your line item of your expenses should not be payday lending. Okay, but let me say this now. Now, this is not a chastising seminar. Amen. Amen. This is to be a helpful seminar. Amen. Because there is hope for the hopeless. Amen. Every Christian ought to shout on that because we were hopeless at one time till Jesus came. All right, all right. All right. So, so, so I say, I say that because if you know, when we know better, we do better. All right. If you in that trap, come see one of us so we can help you get out. Because when we get into the payday lending, many don't understand and recognize it becomes like a drug. Yes. Yes. And even though you want to quit, you can't. Because it's an addiction. And they're charging 400 plus percent on what you're trying to borrow. Mm -hmm. We got some programs that'll help you. Some rebuild this program, some rehab programs that will help you get back on your feet. Stay, stay, stay if you can away from this. Stay, stay. The 90-day the, the same as cash is good if you can pay it off in 90 days. The 12-month same as cash is if you could pay it off in 12. If you don't pay that off in that period of time, they go back and start charging you interest from day one on the full amount. Right? Finance companies are doing their job. But they're putting things in place that are not really helpful to you. Now let me say one other thing and I'm through. Get to know and develop a relationship with a financial person. You got one here? My door's always open for you. Develop a relationship. If I asked you a question this morning, right now, if I said, how many people have a relationship with a bank or a credit union, probably everybody's hand would go up in here. There's a difference in having an account and having a relationship. Relationships have their privileges. Now, don't wait till you need something to go start the relationship. Hey, you really want to mess them up? Go into your branch that you use. Go in and simply say, I need to see the manager. Good grace, they don't know what's going on, what, what's happening. You know, when they go in to tell the manager, the manager's going to be like, what happened, what do we do, what's happening, what's wrong? And when you come in there, they just simply said, I just want to say hello to you. I want to, meet you to, I want to meet you and I want you to meet me. I don't need anything from you right now, but I just want to meet you and say hello. I'm one of your customers and I just want to say hello to you. Guess what happens after that when you come in? Hey! Now, you know you're going to need something down the road, but you ain't got to tell them right now. <laughs> I have uh, one more question. Uh, one more question um, that I have. And then what we have done today is um, um, they're also going to be out in the lobby. They have some literature and a table that you can go and ask as many questions as you want to. You can stay till 5 o'clock, uh, whatever you want to do. But I wanted to, my job was to expose you to help. 
That's what I, my promise is. I'm not a financial advisor, but I can expose you to them. And one of the questions that someone had, because all this stuff is good, and I apologize, I spilled stuff on my shirt. But one of the things I want to ask you is, um, all this stuff is great, but one of the questions that people asked was, how do I do all of that when I'm living paycheck to paycheck? So I'm trying to put God first, trying to pay the small things, but what happens when I'm living literally paycheck to paycheck? How do you do that? Well, I was well. There's a couple suggestions. So, um, literally, sometimes you have to either cut back on things that, again, once you line item the things that you know you're paying for, you have to cut back on certain things. Um, you may be going to get Starbucks. It's a we use this commonly. Um, you may be going to get Starbucks every week, and that might be or every day, let's say. So that might be twenty-five extra dollars a, a, a week that you're spending, which is a hundred dollars a month. You know that. <laughs> You laughing, Dewan? <laughs> um, so that's the way. And then sometimes you also have to take the extra step and get a second job. Um, some people it's feasible for, some people it's not. Um, we talk about hustling, and we don't mean the street term hustling. But sometimes you have to, you know, some young ladies, you might braid hair to get some side money. But when you're living paycheck to paycheck, you have to strategize to put yourself in a position so like, so um, the pastor said here, that you're not, um, your finances aren't controlling you, you start controlling your finances. Um, you cannot make something out of nothing if you don't put effort towards it. So your paycheck is gonna be what it is. Um, you have to learn how to strategize to make sure that you either add more to that or decrease so you can start being in control of your finances and not your finances controlling you. Yeah, and, that, and, 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 and get to know, you heard me a minute ago, too many times we try to do a self-assessment of our finances. Go in and see somebody that that's what they do for a living, right? Because too many times we try to assess it and we try to make it work and it's just not working. And the paycheck, the paycheck becomes a habit. But if you keep doing the same thing, you don't get the same result right so go in and talk with someone that sits down with you and looks to restructure maybe some of your debt how you should pay off some of your debt right and to be able to get you in the position that maybe you don't get it today but if you follow the plan you'll become there down the road now the other thing is is that there are things and she was touching on it that are fixed expenses and there are flexible expenses too many times our flexible expenses become our fixed ones. Starbucks. Uh, I don't even drink Starbucks. If you got to go out and get some you better learn what Mickey D's is, get you a dollar cup of coffee. Gonna, I don't, I'm telling you. My wife drinks Starbucks. Now what? White mocha chocolate, whatever else it is. That ain't no, that ain't coffee, it's a milkshake. All right, all right, now let me, let me, let me, let me. But, but understand, understand, understand this, understand this. There really is, there's a difference in having a fixed expense and having a flexible expense. Too many times we put the flexible expense on a fixed line. And we think we have to have it. But no, no, baby, we can do without some things. I like to pick on, I'm not picking on y'all in here because everybody's gorgeous and half of y'all can't see because the light's in my eyes, but, but, but you, you're gorgeous in here. But I tell you what I tell my sisters and what I, when I'm sharing at, at, at Broadway and Winchester, uh, we have on our line when we are uh, putting our fixed expenses, uh, hairdresser. looking at nobody I'm looking out the door <laughs> but but we have as a fixed expense that I gotta go to the beauty parlor I gotta get my hair done right I got to look like something when I get on the stage for pastor uh oh somebody's gonna let me turn the other way because uh, I ain't talking to nobody in general but let me say this I need I need some folk got a few gray hair in the heads now because see we ain't always had hairdressers <laughs> The hair's got done, but it wasn't going to no beauty parlor. 
Now, if you can afford that, that's fine, but that's a flexible expense. I do remember, I tease my sister on this all the time, I do remember Saturday night in the kitchen. Turning the stove on. Y'all don't know nothing about this, but taking a straightening comb and laying it on the fire until it got hot. And after it got so hot, they put on the back of them naps and pop, 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 pop. pop. I used to walk into the kitchen and say, oh, we got popcorn going on in here. Control, you control, you control it. Don't let it control you. There is flexible and there are fixed. <laughs>